You're listening to the Board Game Snobs podcast, a ridiculous podcast with ridiculous hosts that discuss ridiculous things. And any mention of board games is purely coincidental. And so, without further ado, and with a heavy dollop of shame and embarrassment on my part, I give you the Board Game Snobs. <laughs> Welcome to the Born Game Snobs. This is Enrique, and with me I have Jerry and Gobby, my steam friend. Steam friend. Esteem friend. Esteem. I met him esteemed? on Steam. Is it esteemed or steamed? Esteemed. I'm sorry. If steamed they were would mean steamed, like it's like broil. hot, humid, well, and water you're is always steamed. Right. That's true. I Jerry know. is oftentimes <laughs> steamed. I have not been in quite coming some out time. your ears. You're easily steamed. I am not. Ever yes, since we are. had the talk, <laughs> dare you? Things have been better. <laughs> Has it been better? In I've regards, been stifling myself. In, 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 <laughs> And in, in, in regards well, to you that, need to, so I can better myself. In no. regards to that, on Spotify, which you can, there's a question and answer, and people can leave comments per episode. Ten Star said, "So glad you guys finally had the talk. The vibe was getting quite hostile recently, and that is a good terminology for it because every time I would speak up in the middle of one of Jerry's sentences." Jerry would holler at me about interruptions. Yeah, because that, yeah. that's what it was. He said, love your show nonetheless. I said, he? I don't know who this person is. <laughs> they? I mean, the name is Ten Star. It could be a sheriff and the Wizard of Oz for all I know. Love your show nonetheless always brings a smile to my face. Please be nicer to Enrique. Okay, we don't need to continue this. Huh? Huh? I don't need to continue this. No, no, no. Keep going. I want to hear the next QA. What do you mean the next QA? Finish was, the comment. There was another person that said, what? love the show, enjoy the show. Okay. Here's the real bants for this one. Are y'all ready? Are, we using, well. are you trying to make that normalized? I'm, I'm making it the a bants? thing. It's not a thing. Please like don't. fetch. Okay, Jerry, this is for you because I know Enrique won't know this. No attack against you. You just don't read books. <laughs> You're unlettered and ordinary. I'm illiterate. <laughs> yeah. What's this? Okay. Outsmart your... No, no, not this book. Ignore the book. Oh. Okay. Okay, hold on. Outsmart your anxious brain. Okay, hold on. Okay. okay. This is ironic. I, ran, I, ran, uh, I, I, I thoroughly mm -hmm. love running upon a rando on Instagram that has a few thousand subscribers, but they are a specialist, a... What do you call that when you, uh, an expert in their field? Guru. Guru. I ran across a guy that's a book guy. He like, he's a, he's a, some sort of pathologist. And he talks about books and he collects old books, lots of old Bibles. <laughs> when you look at a book, what would you call the right side of the page? I would guess, I would think you might know this. The right side of a page is called something. When you turn the page and you're looking at this side, of the, the left side of the book, the left page, that's called something. Almost, I guess, almost like Latin ter terminology. Well, like sign, like the left side. In this is the like, side. This is the side. I, I don't know. What's your... Whenever you're looking at this side of the book, this page is the recto. Uh -huh. Okay. This side is the verso. The verso? Recto verso. Recto and the verso. Okay. I've never heard that in my life, and I love little factoids like that. My, this, my question would be, why do you have that term? I mean, it, it, you'd have to Wikipedia that. It goes back to Latin terminology. I know, I know the words, but like, why? What, what use would that be? I think it might be so that you... It's almost, to me, it makes me think of like port... And starboard. And starboard. Like, no matter what direction you're looking at, 
you know which side, which direction you're coming at me from. If I say recto, you know which side of the book we're talking about. Yes, it sounds like rectum. Let's get that out of the way. I wasn't thinking that. Let's but, get out of the way. I mean, there's no way that you're going to be looking at a book any differently. Even if you turn it upside down, you're going to, you're going to assume. But, you, but if I say recto, I know I'm talking about this page here that you're looking at. To me, it's the left, you, it's the right. But that's still the recto. This is the verso. No. It's still the same, like still left and right. But but if, if it's upside down. Even still. No, but I'm saying it's the same as starboard and port. It doesn't matter yeah, which direction be, you're looking at it. Yeah, but nobody's If you're be. reading the book and you say, look at the recto side of your book, everyone in your class, even though you're looking at us this way, yeah, well, will I, know to. I know, but but here's, and, I'm, and I may be completely the only, again, I'm finding out there's tons of things that I apparently think that nobody else has any understanding of. When I say the left or right side of the book, you think your left or your right. That is not what I think. I think of the typical orientation of that book. The left side never changes. It is always the left side. It has nothing to do with the orientation, which is exactly the same thing with port and starboard and so forth. Right. It doesn't change. So when I do this and you're going the left side of the book, it's still the left side of the book. This is still the even left though side. visually it's the right side because if you're holding be, it upside down, because the term that when you say it, I'm not thinking in terms of orientation. I'm thinking of the side. So, for instance, if you're standing on the boat, of course, the ports this side and the starboards that side. But if you were looking at the boat straight ahead and I said the port side of the boat, you know that the port is on the left side. Don't you automatically think my left? No. Well, I, I'm I'm not super familiar. I don't know which side is port and starboard. Left. So I just thought that was interesting because he actually went through the book and he talked about he had an old Bible and he was like, these are the boards. So this is the spine. This here on the outside of a book. It's called the, oh, one is like the hinge. Mm -hmm. The other, this is the the gutter. Yeah. It's just like, it's like he just was going through the anatomy of a book that I'd never heard before. Oh, well, everybody knows the spine of it. Right. But he also had, like, literally every side of the book has terminology when you open it, when you close it. Uh, I forgot what this is called. I wonder why the purpose, I mean, one, I'm sure that has to do with manufacturing. One is the hinge. From the inside, on the outside, it's called something else. I've done forgot. But I just thought that was it because he said, look, uh, notice on the recto side. I'm like, recto? And he said, then the verso. He's like, recto and verso. This is the recto side. This is the verso side. That seems really. It's pretentious. Unnecessary. A little pretentious and unnecessary. But I found it fascinating nonetheless. I don't find it fascinating. I do. I, I, I think it's interesting people that are so involved in you are talking. I have read books my entire life. Never in my life have I ever heard recto and verso. Well, because you, you, you don't need it. That's true. Right. I've went through my whole life not needing to know recto and verso. Yeah. And I, I, I would have to even research why that's the terminology, where it comes from. It's probably manufacturing and everything like that. Something to do with the the manufacturing of it that you need to know this term for, uh, whatever reason. It's probably in yeah, in binding the book. Mm-hmm. For, for, yeah, like, like the letter block and stuff. I, I don't know. It was just I thought it was neat because I like knowing weird stuff like that. Along those lines, we we're watching a show. This is a different, completely different band section now. All right. Oftentimes, cows are depicted with bells around their necks. Right. Yes. Why so? I'm oh, assuming so you can uh, track them. Yeah, it seems. But typically, you don't have bells on a cow. Well, we're watching a show oh. in uh, Switzerland. Mm-hmm. In the hills. Yeah, and here. Ding-ding. My wife says, why do they have bells on them? And we look it up, and you are correct. Right. It's to locate your cows. But I've seen that. That's like just an iconology you see on cows. I was having a, a bell around their neck. Tung, 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 mm-hmm. Never in my life have I wondered why do the cows? Have, I just, just I accepted it. These cows have bells around their necks. Why? 
Never thought about it. Why not? And then Gina says, I wonder why they have bells around their necks. I'm like, oh, that's a good. I'm. Th- this goes back to the previous podcast where I say, I don't think deeply. Uh-huh. I don't wonder about these things. But such a basic thing. Why does a cow? Good question. Now that I'm thinking about it, simply in the olden days. The it's, farmers would need to know they can't see over the crest of a hill. They could hear they could hear their cow mm-hmm. dinging along. I found that interesting. It doesn't take much to find things interesting when you don't worry about what's in, I, I like trivia and facts. I guess I just don't think hard enough about like certain I, things. I don't particularly like trivia and facts simply because of well, if it's Google's not something, kind of ruined all well, that. Well, no, it doesn't because nobody Googles anything, right? Like, nobody looks anything up that is ac- actually of... Well, f- little interesting fact to like, why does a cow have a bell around a snake? Boom, you found it. How does that benefit you? It doesn't. No. Other than knowing but that little people fact. People don't... No. People don't look stuff up out of curiosity. Like, you don't sit around and think of something and go, I'm going... You You have the world at your fingertips in terms of knowledge, but you're not going to look it up in it. Like, you, you'd spend all your days sitting and thinking about things. And looking things up. Most people don't see something and go, I'm going to look that up. I know that's a term about Google, but most of Google searches are Taylor Swift. Like nobody's trying to look up the understanding of that objects and things. It's my point. Or unless they're trying to win an argument. Right. Right. Or somebody thinks of something. When was the singer born? That type of thing. Which right. none of that stuff I find interesting. Well, it, here's the thing with Google, and it's nothing new, is that it, it's a conversation killer. I wouldn't um, say that, no. No, I believe it is. Because used to, you, no one had access to all of the information of the world. Right. We could discuss, when do you think the first Beatles hit came out? Yeah. I think it was probably about 1956. No, I remember a record in 1954 that came out. No, they didn't come out with anything before 1956. And you could debate back and forth and argue amongst yourselves. Not having access to that information unless you go to the library and start researching some microfiche. But you can look it up, though. Yeah. But it would take a lot more effort back in the day than just at your fingertips saying, when was the first Beatles hit record? Boom, Google. Okay, well, all right. I guess we answer that question. What's next? That's not what happens, though. That's not a conversation killer. That literally happens to us all the time. It settles the conversation. You're you're settling the point of the conversation, though. Go on. So So if you're having an argument, and it's something easy like that. When was this Beatle record? I think it was this. I think it's that. You're not having a conversation with somebody. You're arguing about a point. And the point of the argument is to facilitate what is right, to come to that conclusion to what is right. Thus, you Google it, and thus you can prove it. It's not a conversation. You're having an argument. Well, a conversation only loses stuff terms then. But if you're saying... You're talking back and forth with somebody discussing something. Right. And so... If you're discuss and and here's 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 a here's a one point for it. If you're just discussing obscure facts, then of course you can look up every little thing on Google and just stop the conversation because you're just looking up f- the various facts. Uh-huh. Just like the old saying about how dumb people talk about people. Uh-huh. And what was it like? Like interesting people talk about ideas. Yeah. Yeah. You can go from that same route. If you're just worried about the minutia, the, the things that do not matter, like nobody cares about this particular thing. What's more interesting is the overall topic of I don't know exactly the date that this Beatles album was released, but. The overall, why were they so I think so the Beatles were the most influential band of all time because of these reasons. Yes, that. So it doesn't kill the conversation right. unless you're just arguing a very specific point. Well, that's true. Like the conversation is not the Google doesn't Google. And, and again, well, but I mean, there's there's lots of. Yeah. OK. People, yes, I know what you're people saying. Kill conversations because they don't know how to have a conversation. That's what kills conversation. How many? OK, I want to ask you this because of this very conversation, because of this conversation that we're having about conversations. How many people? Do you find engaging in conversations with interesting in your life besides your wife and Bubba? Besides my, there's tons of people. Really? Yes. Like I, yeah, even, yeah, there's tons of people. 
Because I don't need. So, so are you asking me? Do I? I, I just know from knowing you and knowing the way your brain works, you do like to think. Uh, and you and Bub, you, I don't know why you Bub and your wife specifically. Your wife just she drives with you. Y'all think on this realm that, as we've discussed and I've said about myself, I just don't think in. It, it, so you, I think your question that you're asking is, do I find certain people interesting? I don't know how you find me interesting. Well, and you may not. Because I find your way of reasoning interesting, even though I might completely disagree with it. When you say something is fascinating, which is a term that I have to swallow down a lot of times, <laughs> because <laughs> when someone says this is fascinating, I want to, to go like, why? Why? Because that's because, your big question. So why? why? And so always with the why, with, this guy. With why? <laughs> because what ends up happening is, I think introverse and retroverse or analverse, whatever it was that deals with books that <laughs> recto and verso. Yes, I think that's fascinating, and I go why? And you go, I just think that's fascinating. What's going through my mind is you found out something something you new. Didn't know right. That's not fascinating to me. Finding out things I don't know is not fascinating to me. Now, what is fascinating is the connection of not because I understand why I wouldn't know that because I'm not in that realm, right. or why would it be useful to me? But for instance, I will say something that is that was fascinating to me. I'm at a motel. I am getting the cheap motel coffee. In these cups that are always burning hot, you can't pick them up. And I am angry because most hotels have that little sleeve that you put the coffee thing in. It has a name. It is. It's a Zarft. Is that the name? Yes, Z-A-R-F. It's Arabic for envelope. Nobody knows what that is, but I do. And for some reason, I thought that that was a common known (laughs) item. Like a ramekin. Right. Like, that's not something you say every day. It's not something that you see, but it's something that you know what that is. And so I asked the lady that was bringing out the coffee, do you have any Zarfs? And she looked at me like, is that a drink? Like, what is that? And I said, you know, the sleeves, the things that they go in. Oh, no. And she still looked at me odd. So, yes, that is a So... Why do I know that? It's because at some point in time in my life, I needed to know what those sleeves exactly were. Coffee condom is what somebody said on the internet. No, they're Zarfs. <laughs> but yeah, not like we come up with stuff. And then this person says, is Zarf socially acceptable to use in a casual environment? Probably not. You just say it's a sleeve. But but it's one of those things where it's interesting because you need to know it. It's utilize, You can utilize it. So just because I don't know something and somebody tells me something like. So what did you find fascinating that it was called a zarf? Yes, that we're using an Arabic term for this item that most people don't even know what to call it. Like, what is this thing? Like, like people have come up to me and asked me stuff like I need a television cord, I'm like an HDMI cable. Yeah, whatever that cord is, I'm like, do you mean the power? What do you mean? Well, but that, and that's so, literally the same thing in my eyes that I said. Like, but we call it a coffee sleeve. We call it the right side of the page. What is it really? The recto. What is it really? Zarf. Utility. Utility. It's something that you will never use. It's a piece of knowledge that, yes, you find this is fascinating. This is called this. Mm-hmm. But in terms of anything else, you really don't need to know. Like it, it, it will, it will be of no benefit to you. And so, if if I find things that, are, like for instance, otters have the thickest fur of any mammal. I don't know why I know that. I don't, trivial, just trivial things. Yes, stuff like that. I don't find that fascinating. It's just the things thing you could win that, trivial pursuit that yet. goes in there, and I'm like, okay, whatever. That's a that's a all right. That's all right. I don't particularly find that fascinating. I'm not I'm not pro otter. I'm more pro beaver because they actually do stuff. If it wasn't for otters, we wouldn't have New Amsterdam, which is New York. I mean, it's one thing or the otter. So 
The point being, we that wouldn't have that solid. pun. That was solid. No, it's not. That's the same that was joke. Solid. It's been around. The... That was solid. It, you don't. Enrique's over there stretching and yawning. You're not remembering the joke that I told about Juan Garcia Hernandez and the otter. You <laughs> no, stole that I'm joke. Not. Yes, because you stole that joke. And I don't know it. what you're saying right now. Because that's Juan Garcia. That's my joke that I've told a dozen times that you don't Never remember. Yes, and I will not tell this okay. twenty minute long joke that you just yes. So yeah, I know because you don't remember it. But the point is, is that yeah, I don't find you're asking your question to get back to your trivia. Question. You don't like trivia. No, I, I find trivia fine. Your question is discussing things with people. Do I not find it interesting? I find people's response and their way of thinking very interesting, even if I think that they're wrong. I like. Hearing somebody who is passionate and can articulate even something that I think is outright goofy. If you believe the earth is flat, well, you tell me why. What makes you believe that? And let somebody articulate their reasonings and their proof that they think they have or or whatever it might be. I like to understand why you came to that conclusion, why you feel that way. It's not so much the person and what they can contribute to the conversation. It's just Mm -hmm. their their line of reasoning, which everybody has to some degree. So when you meet somebody new in your social circle, Mm -hmm. what is the type of personality you are drawn to? And I can tell you mine, and it's very superficial, and you probably could guess it. What's that? Have funny? Yes. Okay. Uh, If I, if you make me laugh heartfelt Mm -hmm. and you continuously do so, I just laugh at you. I have a friend. I met him when I was 17 years old. He is, and I, in my mind, he is the funniest person I've ever met in my life. Mm -hmm. I I love that guy. It's just, he's got other good qualities. You, you are funny in certain situations when we play. Situationally funny. <laughs> You're situationally funny. In a dark way. <laughs> I, you have a certain humor. I, 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 again, we go back to this thing like I, sometimes I don't know why me and you jive. Right. I don't know why we're friends. I don't know. I mean, I know why we're friends. But, I, I, but the, me and you are so different in so many ways. Mm-hmm. I don't know why we jive or uh, like I asked you why you would find me interesting. Because I don't think like you. I don't I don't have I don't reason in the way that you do. Like to me, you and, and you are very good friends with Bubba and you're friends with Bubba in a different way that you're friends with me. Right. You're friends with Enrique in a different way that you're friends with me. I find it interesting in the way that we find f- people that we want to attach ourselves to in a friendship. I like you because of a variety of reasons. <laughs> This is not the podcast I intended on starting out with. One thing for you, you, uh, uh, and I, I've said this before in many a uh, podcast, the, I appreciate your loyalty and when my mom died, blah, 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 blah. We have to discuss that. Refer to older podcasts in that regard, as far as Jerry's loyalty yes. and being please, there for please me. Please refer to other podcasts to find out how awesome I am. But Jerry's a very awesome friend. An awesome I will and tender say person. that. <laughs> you are, he can be tender when he's, uh, this yeah. is the thing. You know what? With Jerry, here's the thing. Enrique, Jerry is tender at the worst of your life. <laughs> oh <my> God, <laughs> you really need it. I save it up. Otherwise, he's a complete jerk. That's I, right. I know. That's you know right. That, that, but, that is true. That's when you pour it on. That's when people Jerry, need it. Jerry was there for me at the worst time of my life, and I and Bebel was too, and I will never forget that in my entire life. And every time I talk about it, I almost, uh, most times I end up crying. So I, I try not to talk about it. Because I view crying as weakness. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Weakness. <laughs> <laughs> and then the comments like that crack me up. Jerry amuses me. He's I funny to me. Jerry's I funny. Enrique, it took me a long time to warm up to you. Yes. Yeah. It did. I, and But now <laughs> I see your benefit <laughs> to humanity. <laughs> <laughs> You're you. I think the weirdest relationship is me and Jerry. No, like, it's not. No, 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 no like, like, I don't think y'all are like Jerry. Like y'all are very. This is yes. I we just kind of. It's y'all are it's very, a weird. Sim- Jerry saw in you something that he wants to fix, and therefore he's attached you to him. <laughs> <laughs> That's not necessary. But the I think what your question is is how are people that are so different. Why do they engage with each other in this level? Completely different personalities and things of that nature. 
Why does that jive? There are some people, and it is a weakness almost, because if you make me laugh, if you're funny, I just almost automatically like you. Right. Could I point something out? Go ahead. And this is, and I, and I, it's, it's using your logic about people making you laugh. And I will, I will say, everybody has somebody probably in their life that they have a singular quality that they appreciate in that person, or that they particularly find interesting or or, or, or whatnot. And so, yes, you can have various different types of people in your life that are all different. For instance, I can count on one hand, probably in the how many years I've known Bubba, probably almost a decade now, that he has made me laugh. Like Bubba is not, if you, if, if I were to think of Bubba and go, is he a funny person? This is the quality. Do, do, right. do, does he bust me up laughing? Pr- probably not. Like, that's not an overwhelming quality of his that I think of. And like, Bubba's a f- funny guy. He says funny things, but in terms of him being a person that might come and, and intentionally, is he a laid back? He is type person, absolutely, in my mind. But so how is it that somebody who is that way, so what qualities am I seeing of him that I am focusing on and thus this develops a friendship with him? Well, it's because it's not just one. I think it's a, I think it's a I think when it comes to relationships, because that's basically what we're talking about. If you limit yourself to just looking at one thing and you, we typically do this for a reason, well, we we are attracted to certain types of people. We end up locking ourselves into this box and it hinders not only our current relationships, but every subsequent one. So if, for instance, if you just want to be around people who are laid back and funny and they make you laugh, and that's all that you're ever around, you end up missing all the introverted, quiet people who are actually quite fascinating that perhaps are not going to bust you up laughing but they have they have more to offer than just that. And I think that that's what ends up happening is that we end up seeking relationships with this very myopic view of this is what makes me comfortable. This is what I like. And we use that and we overlook so much, not only the bad sides of some things or, or the negative rather, but we also overlook people. And so that's why if, if I look at all the various people that I have in my life, that I purposely sit down and go, I'm going to do things with this individual or I'm going, what, whatever it might be. Like I spit, I purposely seek out to have time or to spend time with those people. Well, let's, let's just use that broad spectrum to say that this is who I consider a friend. I am purposely actively trying to get to know this person and then be a part of my life, have my own in the house, whatever it might be. The variety of them are, are there's tons of them that I do not find funny or that I, there's a lot of them that I don't think are particularly intelligent there are some that are there. There's this broad spectrum. And I think when you have that type of experience, you find out that developing relationships with people is dependent on you than it is them. And that you can come across somebody who you just particularly don't jive with naturally, but yet you can still strive to develop a, a meaningful relationship with that person. And I think you it, it, and it can happen in a variety of ways. And so, yes, to answer your question about finding people interesting. Yes, I find just about everybody. I, I uh, I'll, I'll use recently one of Enrique's new friends, Harrison Harrington. Harrington. I'm sorry. I can't get his name right. I know. Who went with us to Six Flags. Literally, I think I've had two conversations very briefly with this person. I've never, never been around them. We get in the car, we got a two hour car ride to Six Flags, and we start talking. And by the time we have arrived, I've, he's talking about board games, he's mentioned stuff, and I'm already figuring out what's going on in his life, whatever. The, I'm already sitting here going, this person, even though I don't particularly find him funny, he, 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 I didn't particularly find him amusing, it was still this thing of like, oh, this person has, has an interest that I'm interested in, but he's very introverted, I think. Like, he's not going to tell you a lot about himself. I'm going to have to make him comfortable before I can get to know him. Plus, he's probably not going to be comfortable around me unless I am overtly the one just telling him about me because he doesn't know how to go and have this type of conversation. So I'm going to have to be more open with him 
to make him more comfortable if he wants to feel comfortable engaging in anything like like going to this board game convention. I mean, that was like the whole thing. Like he's wanting to go with us to BGG and things of that after this this whole trip of, of going around. And so, yeah, you just you identify the person and you you get to know them. And it, it takes a long time to get to know somebody truly. Is, is I think is the point. I agree. Again, I'm shallow. The first thing I'm drawn to is humor. Although the, the, this, that's not a line to measure anybody by any means. Obviously, there's terrible, terrible comedians out there. And I don't mean comedians as far as their comedy. I mean, as far as their personal views and attitudes and lifestyle. Right. That would be terrible. But as far as what they say, I might find it funny. That's not a, a measure that everyone should measure anybody by. And I, I realize that it's just a quality. I'm just, I don't know why I'm naturally drawn to. You can have deep thinkers. You have the, the Bubba's and the Jerry's of the world. I guess y'all are the only two deep thinkers I know. Cause y'all are the only two people I ever refer to in my right. life in that regard. Enrique, what I said earlier, Enrique, I've grown to, appreciate Enrique when he first came around of course I was what 16 15 17 16. I was not I was not the best hit during those well, times no you were fine Pine? it was it was it was, it, it was me it was me you uh, just I don't know I had a I developed a viewpoint of you and it wasn't until later in which me and Jerry would have arguments on this podcast and then Enrique would like lay everything out in such a reasonable manner and i'm like he sees things very clearly and there it is so you realize that in your mind he was like that but he wasn't you think that he came to your home with this reasonableness with this idea of how to look at something and to come to these conclusions and to, to formulate opinions and things of that nature you think he was naturally that way that is not the case. The reason he became that way was because you befriended him and he was here. And so when you look at somebody and you see these qualities that later you you appreciate about them over a period of time and you think, well, this person's able to do this. It's not that you've somehow peeled back the layers and discovered something. That can be the case, but most of the time it's taking somebody who is introverted or isolated and putting them in a situation to where they can develop something. And so Enrique didn't just show up at your house with this reasoning ability after he has sat in a dark room 16 hours a day for many years <laughs> playing Xbox. Playing Call of Duty. No, he got this from coming and being in a room, playing board games around other people and having conversations and being in an environment where he's having to problem solve and talk about things and seeing this dynamic. And then he has it. And so... That is a developmental thing. It's something that it's it's this it's this idea that you meet somebody and they're quiet. And so you don't hang out with them because they're quiet, because they never seem like they have an opinion or anything of that nature. Well, they may not. They may simply be somebody who is just that depressed or suppressed or whatever it may be. But if you take the time and spend time with that person, put them in environments and they're able to just just not only just feed off the energy, but have different experiences. That's how they get those opinions and become extroverted or, or, or at least more vocal. And it's not just like you just discovered this that they've already had. No, they developed it because you were with them. And so I think that when you look at a relationship from the standpoint of, I say, I don't mean like you look at a person. I said, when, if, if, if a person looks at a, at, at relate, you. yes, if, if a person looks at a, at a, at a relationship as this person is this thing and this is what I'm going to get from this relationship, that's one way of looking at it. If you look at it from the standpoint of potential, this is this person. I don't really know them. I would like to see what they turn into. And this relationship will do this good thing for me, and it will be do this good thing for them, and we'll see what happens. That's what a relationship is. It's a developmental progressive thing where you see somebody improve over time. Do you think there's been a developmental process in me and yours relationship? When you say relationship, do you mean us as 
people from starting off like yes hello i'm gavi you're jerry yes Inter- now so like when you say you're, you're meaning development like character arc is uh, well i'm saying those are two separate things do you mean like has me being around you improved me as a per- improved me as a person, <laughs> well, or has not. having a relation as as the relationship this whole thing that you would call lop in as relationship and improved? I mean, I would say the thing that most people hope for is that you having met someone else, in this case me, and us developing a relationship has uh, inf- uh, yeah improved your life. Yes, yes, it has tremendously for multiple reasons, and I can recount. I could list them very easily. One, it is a, you are a very emotional person, number one, and I am not. And being around somebody who I view as being illogical and highly emotional and seeing how you respond to things helps me to temper my own understanding and how my responses are. Because if I can't say something to you in a clear, concise way that doesn't elicit an emotional response, if I can do that to you, I can do that to anybody. Because you view everything from a completely emotional standpoint, and I don't. So just by being around you, I have improved in terms of how I view people and how I understand why people, how I have come to understand why people get emotional or how they think or how they respond to things. So just that alone. Also, the reflection that I have to have, they have to have the self-awareness of what I say and what I do and how it affects somebody, because normally... If you're around people who are not where you have no real connection to, you get by with a lot of things. You're not caught out on a lot of things. If you have a type of relationship with somebody where they're constantly feeding back to you the negative things for what you're doing, (laughs) then you understand I'm doing this thing. I have to stop it. And so, yes, that is a great benefit. It is it is a it is a thing for which if if you are trying to improve as a person, which I think everybody at the end of the day is trying to do to some degree. That, yes, it is, it is of a great benefit. And it, it really kind of irritates me just a little bit to, for you to feel like that would not be the case, because it's I think it is plainly obvious that now, in this regard, I did not say I just. No, 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 no. no. Well, your, your comment I'm, was like, I, you're probably like like you think me being around you would somehow degrade me and denigrate me in some way. I, I don't think technically put it in that way there you go good good job <laughs> well like like it's a like it's a i'm i am oh okay i'm I just uh, again we are very straightforward I, you you're smart i feel you're very smart you're smarter than me that's what i want to say okay and i feel like in, in almost all our discussions you always have a point of view I've never thought of, and you're always able to eloquently say things that make more sense than what I'm trying to say. And therefore, you're able to prove your point of your point of view in a better regard to me. Mm-hmm. And, and that's not in regards to a relationship. Relationship wise is completely different because that involves emotions and things right. to me. And I just find I, I basically I find it interesting that you enjoy hanging out with me. And uh, could this be a narcissistic discussion? Yes, it could be, because most people want to talk about themselves and they want themselves to feel better in some sort of way. I'm very aware also of myself, uh-huh. almost too aware. And therefore, I think I'm almost nar- narcissistic. You're in that not way. narcissistic. No. OK, so but I enjoy hanging around you for those reasons, because I am very judgmental. Right. I'm very closed off to most people. Right. There was a TikTok that's like, you have your 6 p.m. friends and your 3 a.m. friends. Yes. There's people that you call at 6 p.m. They're there, you know, your good times, your good times. Oh, you want to go bowling? You want to do this? Sure. We'll go eat dinner together. Right. Then you have your friends at 3 Mm a.m. And they're ready to do what they're like. You want to go bury a body? Let's go bury a body. Right. Which is a little extreme, but they got to go to that route to prove the point. Correct. I think that what we do when we play board games is that we're allowed the opportunity to be around other people, to see how they function, and just to, you're interacting in a closed, confined rules. Basically, you're, you're doing these things to try to find out about what the, how these person, people react. And so that's what makes board gaming so beautiful, is that you get to know people and see just by being around them for a very short period of time. And I like like you saw that at BGG. We hung out with Christian and 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 love Christian, and love Chip John, and John Blankenstein, Blankenstein. And so it's like these people that you're around that you may have very little in common with, but you get a feeling just in those interactions of 
this these are people these these what they kind of what kind of people they are and you can have the same negative thing where you're around somebody you're like i really don't know if i really like this person a douche. some yes you see you see that so I, 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 I would say that you're wanting to fill this void of not void but you're wanting to be that for somebody else and i'd say that the best like that old cliche about if you want a friend be a friend type thing i do feel like that it is harder for people to understand what it takes to be we'll just use that term to be a friend if you do not have healthy relationships in your life i think you have to have a healthy relationship with that is that's like the foundation i guess you could say well i will take you for instance you're very private in your life yes I don't know some of the things you're going through health wise, which you've got a lot going on. Right, what right. I found out recently, because we had that big fight a few episodes before. The big fight. Big. The big fight. And I don't want to be the person that just shows up in your house. Exactly. Exactly. And I get your I get your point there. And it this is a, a calculated thing where I'm going, yeah, I'm not gonna tell you everything that's going on because I know you have anxiety and you get as somebody who is very kind of closed off. I'm like, I, I don't need, here, here's, 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 here's the exchange. This thing that makes you very emotional to deal with your mother and me and Bubba showing up and, and being there during that time period, it's a very emotional thing for you. You don't realize is that your that experience for you, you want to do something similar for me, but in a large way you already have. It, it wasn't one titular moment that I can point to and go, okay, I had this thing going on and you showed up and did this thing. This is the one, you know, this is the thing that I can remember. It's an overarching, more long-term uh, issue that I experienced. Uh, for instance, what got me back into board gaming, I had said that before, it was the death of my father and my older sister along the same time. So like within just a, like a, just a four or five year period, I had lost a child, then lost my older sister, and then lost my father. So just boom, 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 three immediate deaths in the family. And I was not doing very well. And I remember being at this point where I got back into board gaming and was particularly solo gaming at that time. It was just me being a grognar playing old board games and coming up with this idea that I don't have any friends. And it wasn't because I was not in a position to have any I simply didn't have any because I didn't put forth any effort. Like I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't talking to people. I, I went to work. I come home. I sat in my room and did this thing. And I realized that over a period of a couple of years that I needed that interaction. I needed that interaction or I was just going to be, slip off into a, just a pit of just, just depression and just be locked into this is how I am. And so I took it upon myself to... I'm going to go out and I'm going to find people. I'm going to be around a variety of people and I'm just going to see what sticks. And that's how this, this, that is how this, this, that's the, that's the, the, my evil origin story basically is <laughs> I'm not good with people. I am mad because the world has done all this to me, but I have no one to talk to. I don't want to talk to people, but I want to be around people that I can interact with and it be fine. And I don't have to have this emotional cathartic where I go and pour my heart out. But I just need to be around people that are having a good time. And that led to me meeting uh, Rike's family, being a part of that. And like Mag and like but people don't I don't think people all realize like the, the whole deal with Enrique was when I'm very, very close with 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 them. His whole entire family, which in turn got to me where Enrique is this dumb kid that's not in doing the same thing, not really being very social. And well, well, let's go play a board game. And that turned into me meeting Bubba and me and Bubba being close. And then Bubba going, hey, I know this other guy that plays board games. And that, so in a, in a long overarching year from like 2015 to now. The emotional thing that you feel about this one event with your mother and I and Bubba showing up is the way that I feel about the past eight years. It is because I was in a very similar spot and I needed to go out and make a change myself 
and insert myself into an area for which I knew I could I could be a part of something. And that's what this is. And so even though I don't have that one thing that I can point to, say, remember that one time you went and said mm-hmm. this one thing, I don't have that. Rather, I have hundreds of hundreds of different events that I can look back on and go, I remember when we played this game together, when we played Star Wars Rebellion, I remember you taking off and blowing up this star with Leia and running around your house. I remember our first game of, of Cosmic Encounter because when I first met you, and was here at your home and coming over here and putting my board games here and playing these games with you, in your mind, we were just coming over and laughing and having a good time. And that's what you remember about that was this, this is just us. We're coming and we're, we're having fun and we're doing this. But deep down, I was struggling with something that was uh, unsurmountable in my mind. And this was the break of, I'm going to go to this place and be at this spot for a couple of hours and play a board game and stop feeling this way. Because if I can do that for a few hours, then maybe that will transfer over to the next day. And so that's what that was. And so even though it's not one thing, it, it, like I said, everybody has a moment that they can point to and then other people have this long arc. And mine was just a very, very long arc of me getting through a terrible period of depression and and just a a ton of things during that time. And that took place here. And so, yeah, it's it's just different. And and I think that you're in my one moment, I guess, in regards to what you're saying, my one moment wouldn't have happened without what you're talking about. Right. It would not have happened. And that one moment was a response I don't think you realize is that my response to that was because of what I had ex- had experienced already. It was a, I don't know what you're going through, but I can, re- I can go through these three other deaths that I had just experienced. And so thus, this is how serious I'm going to take it. And I don't know how to deal with anything emotionally, but I'm going to do the best that I can for this one person and this is what I think they need. And I'm just going to do that and we'll see. And so, yeah, that's that's what that was. And I think that when you have, I think that board gaming as a whole offers you that ability or that at least an opportunity to be around people and to get to know them and to decide whether you're going to be a part of their life. And I think what, you're, what you said there is important. Yeah. It affords you the opportunity. Right. It's upon you whether or not you take that opportunity to get to know this person beyond. That is very true. That is very, there, are, there are people that I have played and been board games with or been around, done other activities with, that I know no more about them now than I ever have. They, 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 don't, they don't want that, I guess you could say. Or, or I honestly feel like a lot of people have never had a that foundational relationship with somebody, a healthy relationship, whether it be just with a, with their, their, their parents or spouse, whatever it might be that they need to say, Oh, this is what a healthy relationship is. This is how you act and be a friend to somebody. And this is what I must do. Like nobody comes, nobody hands you a manual and say this, all right, kids, this is how you should behave. And this is how you go make friends. Nobody does that. I mean, it's it's even if you think of like like just in school, like who, when are you around people of your same age that all want to do the same thing? <laughs> like that's just not not the case. And even that doesn't transition into a, a long term friendship. Like, why do you want to spend time with this person? Is that based on qualities that you see or is it just based on what we're doing at the moment? Like we were friends because we were on the same basketball team. But as soon as we graduate high school, we don't talk to each other ever again type thing. So that's, yeah, it's it's the opportunity for you to develop those relationships. And I think that's important to what, and at BGG that we just had, where Soul Train showed up and he brought along his friend, John Phipps. We knew Soul Train from previous uh, social media Mm -hmm. interactions. He brought along his friend, John. I don't know that we, we had interacted with John at all. He said, I'm bringing along John for these reasons. John was going through some stuff. John's going through some heavy stuff. He said John had a fantastic time. John was a delight. Right. And he was going through some heavy stuff in his personal life. 
And I talked to him on a personal level and he told me all the things that was going on. I was like, my God, <laughs> this is, this is, he's went through some terrible things, but yet here he was having a good time with us playing board games right. and uh, uh, not to make board games a deeper thing than it needs to be, but also it is a thing. You have this connection on this level of board games. Mm -hmm. That's the foundation, like you said. So you have this foundation of we enjoy this thing. We enjoy playing board games. We're having a good time. It provides you the opportunity, as you said. Mm -hmm. You can build on that or you can just move on, whatever. That's up to you. But you can take this opportunity to build on this board game thing. And sometimes I've disregarded bo it's board games. You know, it's, it's games. Children, it's games. You think of candy, but no, you don't think that deeply. But some of these games provide that deep connection on things. And I've never really, until this very podcast, I've, I've kind of just been dismissive. Like, they're games. They're board games. Well, I would argue, and this is this is a very frustrating thing that I hear people say, because you denigrate this activity. Because that's that's all that board gaming is. It's, it's just another activity. We, we You'll use the, the term games in, in a pejorative. But what do most fathers do with you know that 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 whole cliche? Mm -hmm. What do you do with your son? You play like, catch. You play catch. Why are you thinking? Well, I need to improve his proprioception <laughs> and his his hand eye coordination, and this is good exercise. No, you are engaging in something that is developmental, and you have the opportunity to be out there and to be congratulatory and encouraging and instructive and be a part of something that's physical and both be doing this thing together. And the same thing with people play Monopoly with their kids that like you talk to children, like what, what are the things that you remember when you were young that your parents did with you or something? It's some stupid game. I remember me and my father, he, <laughs> it was a game we made up. Yeah. It was a game you're like, where you're just like, tag, I got you. And it's just a stupid thing where we ran around tagging each other, almost like freeze tag. Right. I remember that clear as day. Right. That's like a bright spot in my childhood. Correct. And that's, that is a, that is a thing. So board games are of the same ilk. It's just with elk, ilk, ilk. It's the same thing. You're, you're getting together with people. Here's this structure. Here's this thing we're going to do. And I get to see your way of thinking, your way that you strategize and and see little hints of what you might be good at. John, when we were playing Icky, Icky, everything burned down. Right. His life burned down before him. That was sad. It I was come sad. back and it actually bothered me. They didn't like Icky. Yeah, but then, then they're like, well, this kept. I was like, all, oh, yeah. All, but at the same time, down. it's like this but, thing of. But I'm just, well, real quick, just saying it, it, board games can put in a box how you deal with things. Right. And I know that's like this seems way more philosophical than it should be. But it's true. It's like, how can you do it? And if you deal with things and if, and that reminds me of like people that flip the table. If you flip the table, please seek help. Well, it's not about, it's not about the game. You're not frustrated about this game. Right. You're frustrated about other things. Uh, but, but again, please seek help. Right. If you throw pieces, if you get angry, if it affects you to this degree, Please, I, I don't mean this in a joking. Please seek help from a psychiatrist, psychologist, whatever. I don't know the difference between those terms. I do, but I forget and I get them confused. I'll be one wrong. of them can write your prescription. One cannot. That's basically it. But there's actually, you know, different colleges. <laughs> but, 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 that was, but for yes, yeah, simple. But please seek help if you get this frustrated, this angry, this upset that someone didn't follow the rule, and you get so angry at them that they messed up this rule. Please seek help. Because that is goes to something deeper. And I think these games, for all their rigmarole that we can give them, but they're just games, they're just stupid, and many of them are. Can't stop. It's a stupid game. But if you get furious. But if you can't stop. <laughs> you can't stop. You may have a gambling addiction. I don't know. No, it's not an addiction. <laughs> you may have an issue, but if you react in a certain way to these games, if you react in such a visceral way, to something that occurs in a board game, something deeper is going on with you. I know this because I've experienced this. 
deal with it. <laughs> deal with it. And it, it, it can take time. Nobody's going to fault you. Take all the time you need. Yeah, everybody's made mistakes. One of my, me and my wife's favorite thing to say. Are you to trying other. to, are you trying to calm down John for, like, no, <laughs> I really feel like you're John, just upset. It's okay. It's, John, you made a mistake. He's okay. It's not <laughs> a great you game. Okay. You didn't build up enough fire retardant. It's okay. But anyway, uh, me and my wife have this ongoing joke of, have you ever made a mistake? And we often like to play the dumb and dumber. Have you ever made a mistake thing that John, Jim Carrey says? Oh, well, pardon me, Mr. Perfect. I guess I forgot that you never, ever make a mistake. Anyway, it, it, but it really does like, and Jerry has helped me in our relationship view things. I've, I'm very, I'm telling you, I'm not a deep person. I know. I'm very artificial. Yes. Superficial. Superficial. Like, a, oh. like a, I was just, I'm agreeing with you. It's like, are you a robot? Is this... a, wait a minute. Superficial is a term, not artificial. I'm not a robot. I don't think of things deeply, but Jerry has helped me view things. Maybe this is going on instead of what you think is going on. Right. And maybe you should deal with this instead of just being upset at everything. Right. And I think, yeah, that's. And I think a lot of people need that in their lives. They do. Because they don't realize, I'm upset. Why I'm upset, I don't know. Do mm -hmm. You need someone to guide you along the ways of why you don't know and help you. And that, I mean, that might require professional help. We are not a professional podcast. Unless you go to the highest tier of the Patreon. <laughs> then we won't give medical the advice. The God tier. Yeah. <laughs> But $1, you, you, you donate enough a month, the gobby will talk to you for an hour on the phone. I am very deep. I guarantee, you, guarantee you, there will I be have, an option. I, you, I have a PhD. <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> you can pay eight hundred bucks and get one from that Guatemala or something. But I, I, I that's what I, I, I appreciate about Jerry in many ways, and, and Enrique. Enrique sees things. And basically, what cracks me up about Enrique is Enrique just sees things as they are. And he would just spit that back out at you. Right. Bam. There it is. That's very clear. You might need a friend in your life that just spits the reality of mm -hmm. what you are back out to you yeah. in the hopes that you... In the like, next sleeveless Hispanic you come across. <laughs> that could be what you need. And what Jerry said is true in that if, you, <laughs> if you're a good person, Hispanic. if you're a good person, everyone wants to improve themselves. Yes. I want to constantly improve myself but because I. The thing is about that improvement, it, I find that it is, and this is coming from experience, it is very difficult to improve if you don't have outside. Nobody is, in, is self reflective enough, I think, to really see it all. You do need somebody on the outside looking in. That goes back to the comment that I was very vaguely made, made mention of mm -hmm. Bubba coming to me. Yeah. I made a comment about self-improvement and Bubba come to me. And it's like, why did well, you say that's right. what are you referring to? And I was like, because the person that I was referring to in my comment I made, they made, they said, I made a deliberate change in my life. Mm -hmm. That's very difficult to do. Oh, Yes. A few months ago, I did that, and not in regards to anything deeply, but it, but physically, in regards to my health, my uh, physical health, I stopped drinking, I started doing Weight Watchers, and I made many changes in my diet. Which is like physiologically one of the hardest things to do, right. by the way. Like this is, yeah. Those things affected me mentally. Right. Mentally affected me emotionally. Mm -hmm. So it's just this domino effect of things for the better. Right. I was doing fantastic. I'm not doing anything bad now. I just got off track. We, my anniversary hit. We had parties. We've had like several weekends of gatherings and right. just blah, 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 blah. But anyway, I'm going back to the changes you need to make in your life. You need to make deliberate changes. To do that, you might need to make physical changes. For me, it is. Diet and exercise. You hear it all the time 
about how diet and exercise make a person feel better, but yet so few people do it. I think they've even said like one to two percent of people actually follow through oh, it's, it, it's, on making themselves feel skinnier, it, like losing weight. It don't even, you don't even have to lose weight. It is just the idea of the exercise. Yeah. And so just following through. So I was following through. So my goal is I've lost weight. I've gained weight. I've lost weight. I've gained weight. There has to be a point. And where there is a permanent change in your life, I plan on doing that. Right. What do you think caused you? Because you've done this in the past where you've set goals and done things and then fell back. What what if you had to identify what it was that knocked you down, that that made you fall off and like, uh, you know, Uh, just mental weakness. We're going to go getting out of my routine of. Uh, whenever we go out of town and we're around people that are eating and drinking and having a good time, I want to join in. Uh-huh. But so and I, and I'm not I'm not attacking you on this. I'm trying to point out something so that y- you can come to this conclusion so that I could not fail again. So, yeah, you because I've been I've, I've seen you go on diets. Let's just use that as, as a as a good deal. I need this. Go and ahead. You've lost a lot of weight and then suddenly you stop dieting. Right. OK. And so your answer to that, the reason that you stopped was because you went to a gathering and had a thing. I cut myself a break. Okay. I'm the type of person in my mind, and I know this, you know how people have cheat meals, cheat days, cheat weekends? I can't cheat. Okay. So, but my my point is, is that I want to get up every day and I want to do this thing. And you do that for 30, 40, 60, whatever days. And then one day something happens and... You're not doing that thing anymore. What about tomorrow? Why don't you start back tomorrow? Because that is literally the thing that I have witnessed you do where you are doing really, really good. One little thing of what I would even categorize of Mm self-sabotage. And then you now have license that you're done. That is a... I'm, pro- I'm sure Weight Watchers co- has written a book on this, but it is a, it's just purely mental. It's a purely mental thing of extremism of all or nothing. Right. So either I'm completely, g- which is not achievable. Right. No, it, it's never, nobody can diet so extreme or do anything so extreme that you will never be able to, to not have this setback. Like I'm going to get up every day at 6 a.m. There's going to be a day when you don't. And then that that does not mean that the next day you do whatever you, you're, you now have license to do whatever you want to do again. I would say, so for me, the first hurdle, the first hurdle would be to get in the routine. That's the first right. hurdle. It takes two to three. It, for me, it takes like two weeks. But once you're in the routine, when you fail, which right. you will, that's what I was going to say. So for me, the first hurdle, though, is to get in the routine of, okay, I'm back on track. Right. That's my first hurdle. Get back on track. Uh, the, probably the second and final hurdle is, okay, how do I deal? What you're saying is, how do I deal with I had when a, I do mess yes, up? Yes, I had a plan where we're doing this. And I see from my experience being around you, you have this mindset that you're doing this thing, you're doing this thing, you're doing well. The soon as there is a setback, I'm done. You're done. I'm done. I, I agree one thousand percent. That's you, been my you go. Life. This is this is. I'm done. I don't know. Which are all things. That's that, a fat person mentality. Well, I don't think it's really even a. I don't. I. I wouldn't call that a fat person mentality. I'm sure that there's psychologically there is something that people who have issues with dieting and things of that nature probably do have this idea of I'm going to do all this. When it doesn't work out, when I when I just do something normal, where I just have a day where I do not eat right, well, which is a normal thing. Where I don't actively concentrate and count everything I'm eating. Yes. You become so upset about it that now you're just stopping. What is the thought behind that? Aye, that's a good question because that is literally the bane of my existence as a fat person. Okay. And, I, and, 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 and many a fat person because... We have that one failure, and it's like, I think it's the all or nothing mentality. What leads to that, I haven't thought deeply about. Do you feel like when that happens, when you you go out and you go out to eat and you eat too much, and now in your mind, you've crossed the boundary, you're no longer on your diet? I've blown it. The next day, is it, 
I have blown it. I'm done. So I'm just going to do whatever. Yes. Why do you think that that comes into your mind instead of today's the new day and I'm back on day one? Like, I'd have to think about that. So is is it a feeling of guilt? Like you feel guilty because you have some... Mm, I think it's self-pity. Okay. I, I, I'm glad you said that because I wasn't going to say it. it. It is a thing of you feel like you've gone so far. This is a thing. I feel so bad for myself. And now I'm going to just, I'm, this is easy to eat my feelings or to mm-hmm. do this thing that makes me feel comfortable. And that's something that we all do to some degree. We want to be comfortable. And so thus we're doing something incredibly uncomfortable to make a change as soon as we fail at that, we have this sense of self-pity, and now I've given myself license to just give up. Yeah. And that, that that mindset of not being able to just go, I'm going to have this cheat day or this one thing, and then when I'm done with it, tomorrow, I'm back on it. Get out of your head and stay hard. There's no, there's, there's nothing, there's no physical response that stops you from doing that other than you going... I guess I feel so bad about what I've done. It's so it has something to do with forgiving yourself, I would uh-huh. guess, to some degree. Not even forgiving yourself, just understanding this is a normal thing. And now I'm back to normal. I'm doing my other thing. I'm, I'm back on my diet or I'm restricting whatever. Why do you think you can't do that? I don't know. What's the mindset the next day? Is it really one of you're just... You've given up. You failed. So I might as well just is it is it truly that feeling of I've given up, I failed, or is it I just want to go back to doing what I was doing? No, it's for me. It's I've given up. I failed. Get out of your head and stay hard. Okay, so you're just it is a look of I have failed in this one thing that I, this bar I have set so high, mm-hmm. which you know you will not right meet. I thus have failed in mm, it, and now I, now I have <laughs> yeah now I have the right to indulge. Because I'm, I'm I'm feeling sorry for myself. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a self pity. Okay. It's a it's a guilt. It's a giving up on yourself. I, I want to be skinny, but when I don't meet it and I fail, it's just it's all in or nothing. It's the that mentality. And I've seen many a trainer and you know nutritionist whatever say that. Don't do this. They say right. it repeatedly, you can't have nonstop. That. So how? Do but you, all of us fat people do it anyway. Well, so how do you not have that mentality? I don't know. Get out of your head and stay hard. Well, wouldn't it? If it were me, and I don't know if this would work. It's a matter of goal setting and knowing that you're going to fail ahead of time. Like you don't, you don't, you win the championship, and go to the Super Bowl, win the Super Bowl, and still have lost a game or two. So it's like this thing of you don't have to be perfect to get there so you plan to fail like you know i'm going to diet for two weeks and then i'm going to have a cheat day where i'm just going to do what i want and then the next day i'm back on my diet for another month yeah and then i'm going to have a cheat day and then i'm back on my diet for another month it's like i know i'm going to do this thing and that's where i can start and restart and i don't have to have perfection and that's why it's that's why every reasonable nutritionist says to have cheat days. Right. And then for my brain, it's like, I can't have a cheat day because once I cheat, I'm done. Which is a, you can't, like, I will never lose weight having that mindset because it is the all or nothing mindset. Mm-hmm. Because as soon as I screw up, I'm done. And then I have to eventually f- crawl my way back to the mentality of, okay, I'm ready to give this another go. Well, do you feel that way about other people? No, no, because I've given this speech to Charday because Charday has a real self hate speech type of mentality. Mm-hmm. And I say the things I've read and seen. Right. It's like, you don't treat anyone else this way. Mm-hmm. Why do you treat yourself this way? Is that where you were going? Well, no, I'm just, I was just wondering, do you, do you feel that as other people, are you not? No, okay. obviously you're, you're going to say, no, just, just start back where you were, do what you was doing, get back on the horse, all these positive things, all this that happened. Okay. Just start back the next day. Mm-hmm. So don't, why, don't beat yourself so up. So why don't you tell that to yourself though? Mm-hmm. That's the self-talk that is negative and that I have dealt with my whole life. It's this negative self-talk. Well, 
that I beat myself. Well, why do you engage in that? Is that a, is that an actual action that you're taking? Yes. So why why don't you? It sounds like that's the foundation of it. Is just don't do that. Start thinking the other way now. Like you plan uh, uh, plan but, that you're going to fail and plan the positive thing. It's just it's uh, to me it's the same thing as the. I know you don't believe in a whole lot of it, but the the positive building those neural pathways yes, of positivity. Yes, I believe, yeah, like neuroplasticity. I mean, I understand so that. So it's like I have my whole life has just been negative, 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 negative. So mm -hmm. that's all I think. Mm -hmm. I think positive for other people. Why? I don't know. I guess most people do that, though. But when it comes to myself, it's negative. So it's very hard for me to deal with myself in a negative pattern. Of like, it's okay. You all right? Just start tomorrow. Boom, done. Forget about the past. Right. I can't. I. I don't do that. How I do that? Apparently, from the research I've done, because I have done research, is to do that. You positive self talk. Mm -hmm. Positive. What was that phrase? Affirmation. Positive affirmation. Yeah. You have to build those neural pathways in your brain. Of you have to get rid of the negative and replace them with the positive. That's just super difficult when you're 46 years old. Right. Well, I think that writing that down, the actual positive, like what you would imagine you would be thinking or saying to yourself that would get that negative out, I would have that well planned out and plan to fail. Like, no, that I'm going to have this day and purposely have this day where which I am going to cheat. Yeah. And then tomorrow is the next day. And this is what this is my plan. I'm going to engage in this positive affirmation because I planned this. This is I am in control of this. This is my cheat day. I'm having my cheat day. And tomorrow, this is my positive day where this was planned. This is all part of the plan. And even if it wasn't, the plan is, is that when you you fall down, this is how I'm getting back up. And this is my route that I'm taking to get, to do that. And this is when I have just like Arthur Toad Bruce. Why do we fall, sir? So that we can learn to pick ourselves up. Still haven't given up on me. Never. Yet you have the next day, you have your planned out. Like I would think of it in terms of the next day, these I have a cheat day, my recovery day is this meal. It's this thing. I'm doing these things. This is what I have to do. Like, my next day is already set up and planned. And here we are back to you helping me again. Well, no, I'm just thinking, I don't I don't know if this is work. I don't know anything about it. Because I just know that that is true. It, it is difficult when someone says, oh, I'm depressed. It, you, the people who've never been depressed go, well, just think about this. That doesn't, you know, if you've not experienced it, you don't know it. It's the same thing with ha people having negative talk or having this, this it is hard to go, this is what you got to do. Why don't you just think this way? Just push away from the table, they say. Right. And it's not, it, you're not eating because of a, you're eating because of emotional response. Mm -hmm. It's a thing that you use to satiate a need emotionally. Correct. Right. Anytime. Yeah. Yeah. That's another aspect of it that we didn't. Yeah. Anytime yes. I get stressed, emotional, depressed, I eat. Right. Which is a whole nother thing. <laughs> so, there's a lot to being a fat man. There he is. Enrique wouldn't know. Enrique's fit as a fiddle, he says. Now I'm getting a little bit chunky. You no, are, I've, but you've been working out. Enrique, I, I was Glowing. going through some old pictures I have on Google Pics. Mm -hmm. You had a fuller face back in the day. You've lost weight. Mm. He'd but been working out. Whether you realize it or not. He'd been working out. Jerry's looked the same for like five, ten years now. I've gained a lot of weight. I've gained weight and lost weight. Really? It's all been this water thing. That just, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. What about your issues? Yeah. We won't discuss uh, Yeah. Well, mine's all medical. I'm paying to have <laughs> mine fixed. I'll be, I'll be done. But do you know when? I have no idea. No idea. Probably in February. Okay. What was it well, again? We'll like, address in the beginning of February. It's just, it's just, like, <laughs> he, pointed he pointed to his head. Do you have a, I told, no, I told, I had told. The kidneys of your brain. You know, well, no, I told him I had a tumor. And when, if, here's the deal. If you say you have a tumor and. Brain. Everybody. It's brain. And so I stopped saying that because people will ask and I'll be like, well, I have this tumor. And they're like, like they're already like, they, like not in my brain. It's not in my brain. It's in my adrenal glands. It's trying to make me have a stroke. So it's not, yeah, it's not, it's not a big deal. 
I mean, it is a big deal, I, but it's not a big deal. I was going to say adrenaline gland, but then deal. it was like... It's dog. Do you say it's not a big deal to make yourself feel better? No, I yes. don't feel any way about it. Okay. I'm ready to die. Okay. I've been, I've been shot at and all types of stuff. I've had all... T- I was poor, poor... Now, is this you being a putting of a false bravado? No, no. Mm. I, I am legitly... I am... There is very... We had this discussion at Six Flags of getting on rides with everybody that, and I like I just walk on to any ride, and they're like, "Doesn't that not frighten you?" I was like, "Not no. really." No, I said because I'm dead inside and I'm ready. Like I'm, I anticipate and plan for any bad interaction. I'm ready. I have a plan, and it may not work out, hmm. and I'm okay with that. That's how you have to be, and that gives me but a level of motivation. I want to put. I just want to get it out there for our listeners, for the board game stops loyal. Jerry does have a tumor. I'm fine. On your kidneys. It's on my adrenal gland. And I'm which is close to your kidneys. On top, it's a little hat. That's, that's on top of your kidneys. <laughs> but that's the concern. <laughs> it's a concern because every once in a while it fires up and dumps a bunch of stuff in my system and I almost have a stroke or a heart attack. And so okay. the surgeons are approaching this very delicately yes. and they have to approach it delicately. And there is cause for concern. Don't I'm let Jerry dumb it down for I'm, you. It's not concern. I will be, I'll be out for like maybe a day. Okay. And I'll bounce back and be fine. Okay. I'll be just I, fine. I am not worried at it at all. You can just see me in the surgeon's room. It's like, Scaffold. Yeah, they'd be like, a, like oh, a, I can't really afford my insurance <laughs> cancel. Let it Rike. <laughs> I got this. Rike got this. I want like a 10 minute video. Got, uh, if there's a tight spot, we need small hands. And Rike. <laughs> Rike. That would be like the, that would be the worst thing ever. Being in being in there, they come out to my wife, uh, your husband, we're, we're having a problem. Uh, the laparoscopic, we we don't have the we can't we, we just can't reach it. We can't enough. reach it. We don't have nothing small enough. And Rike's, I've got I, this. I am here. Wake up and Rike's, I went up through your navel. <laughs> That's his pancreas. <laughs> feel here. What's that? It's oh. like I'm learning the human anatomy. <laughs> I would die. I would literally wake up and die. It's like what did you? Oh. It's like what? I hope we it's don't like look. I video this. Watch. Yeah, that, in a year's yeah. time, I hope we don't look back at this episode and cry. That that will be one of those things that I have thought about. Is like I like the fact <laughs> that this podcast is like a time capsule, <laughs> and that there may be a point. Oh, yeah. There, no, there, there will definitely. Godfrey's obesity got to there him. There will definitely, there will definitely be a point or at Jerry's some time that one of us is dead. Enrique, as you know, kidney got to him. Yes. Like all three of us have certain factors so, that could something. lead to it no longer happening. Edward, somebody, somebody, yeah. yes, somebody's going to be going back and listening to episodes. Of oh, and you know what's going to make me mad? What we shoot to number one. <laughs> <laughs> if we win the Golden Gate <laughs> posthumously, I will be so mad. That would be so hilarious. These guys have been dead. <laughs> all three died. And it's like, number one. Well, they don't oh, even have a podcast. We anymore. just now realize the people are gone. Yeah. The b- <laughs> they talked about things much beyond much just beyond. board games, yes, actual yes. friendship and feelings. Yes. And that's why I love this podcast so much. And that's why. Hopefully, we'll continue to go on. Mm. Now, but you know what? If one of us dies, never count on tomorrow. Kiss your mother. No, if you die, I'm hug we're, your father. We're carrying on. <laughs> At least are you going to do it just a duo, or are you going to bring somebody else in? Uh, no, we'll we'll stretch it out. We'll do like a victory lap. Okay. Yeah. Somebody dies. That's what you have to do. We have to have this moment of mourning and anything. And I'll try my best. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta let the. What do you mean? You'll you'll try your best. You could be the one bad. dead. You could oh, be the one dead. Too. I'm planning it to be you. You oh, always get I would hope so. You'd hope Jesus. so. Winners go home and Lose talk us. to the prom queen. <laughs> no, is that is untouchable? Yeah, just, no, that's The Rock. Oh, was it? Oh. Yeah. It wasn't talking to the prom queen. No, it was if you watched it on that <laughs> It was TBS. TBS. You can probably- Slug in a ditch. <laughs> yeah. uh, you, don't you, they, they don't do that anymore. I don't now think so. On network I don't television. Think so, no. Remember, Enrique, back in the 90s, when a show was rated R and they wanted to have it on television, they would have to have people who sounded similar to the actors. <laughs> no, I don't. I think they got some of them no, to redub. No, they would redub certain scenes 
so that the vo- whatever they were saying that was very explicit language, they would oh. try to. And sometimes it did not. They would use the weirdest of Get things. these I monkey know. fighting snakes off this Monday to Friday plane. Weird stuff. I actually remember those. Yes. And it was very... Yes, it was very interesting that they thought, we'll just uh, do this. Yeah. I just want to bring out, and I apologize to Chad, because I had a bunch of 25th century games that we played that well, we were going we'll bring that up in the future Drawer podcast. and Velomino. That was good stuff. They were all good. We'll <laughs> catch you next time, we'll Chad. We'll catch you next time, Chad. Come on our podcast. You- Chad Elkins. Elkins, specifically. Chasson. Of a different elk. <laughs> Chasson of a different elk. He's... He's in Japan right now, as far as I think. No, he's not. He may be out by the time this podcast comes out. Chad Elkins, if you want to come on our podcast, reach out to us via Facebook DM. Slide into our DMs because we want to talk to you about he probably the things doesn't, you're doing. Doesn't listen to every episode. He may not he's listen a busy to every episode. Man. I understand. You but just if need he to happens to listen him. to this one, need to message him. Holler at us. Holler at him. All right. Uh, I'm Gabby. This is Jim. <laughs> Get out of your head and stay hard. Thank you for tolerating this episode of the Board Game Snobs. Stay classy. <laughs>